We're good. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone, to the Planning Advisory Committee uh, meeting of Monday, July 11th, 2022. It is five o'clock, so we will call the meeting to order. And if we could to get a mover for the approval of agenda, that the agenda for the Planning Advisory Committee meeting of July 11th, 2022 be approved as presented. If somebody could move that for me, that'd be great. Thank you, Jim. Second by Leanne, that's wonderful. All in favor, good stuff. And we have uh, declarations of interest. Seeing none, that's great. Moving on to number four, approval of minutes. Um, May 5th, 2022, that the Planning Advisory Committee minutes dated May 5th, 2022 be accepted as presented. That was sent along with the agenda. If anybody has any uh, questions or concerns about that, if not, if I can have somebody move and second, that'd be great. Thank you, Jim. Second by Leanne. All in favor? And moving on to that the Planning Advisory Committee minutes of June 27th, 2022 be accepted as presented. Again, if uh, unless there's questions or concerns or changes, if I can have somebody move that. Leanne, thank you. Second by Jim. All in favor? All good. Thank you. Moving on to the, the meat of our agenda now, we have two items this evening. The first one is the PAC Report 07-2022 under our Community Improvement Plan. It's an application for the downtown core um, at 270 Edwards Street, Units A and B, otherwise known as the Dr. Holmes Office and uh, McDougall Insurance. And the recommendation that the Planning Advisory Committee approve in full the CIP application for 270 Edward Street at a combined maximum amount of 24,000 under the grant program and 40,000 under the loan category. If I could have somebody move that for discussion, please. Thank you, Leanne, second by Jim. And with that, I believe uh, it's Dana that's gonna to speak to this, if you will, Dana. Thank you, uh, through you, Madam Chair, to the committee. So as uh, you noted, we have an application before the committee tonight for the property that current is currently home to the uh, Prescott Optometry Center, which is Dr. Holmes and McDougall Insurance. So the um, property has recently uh, changed ownership. So the new owners have uh, completed a fairly thorough assessment of the property and have identified a number of areas that they'd like to address. Um, everything from structural related improvements to just general aesthetic improvements that I think will really beautify the property and um, you know, to make it a, a much better complement and fit within some of the existing uh, downtown architecture that we do have. So as I noted in the uh, report, there are several uh, upgrades that are planned. Um, the, one of the, the biggest issues that they have to address right away is structural and it's related to some settling that's been happening with the building over the past few decades. And if you've had a chance to review um, what was a, a very comprehensive application package and if the applicants are watching, I, I would like to uh, express my uh, gratitude for the very thorough application that was prepared. It, it's made it very easy as a staff person to complete the assessment. And I think it'll provide the committee with a very thorough picture of exactly what work is planned for the property. And as you'll see, they've taken a very thorough, uh, thoughtful approach to the property, not only making aesthetic improvements, but also addressing some of those structural issues. Um, you know, some of the other issues they plan to address are accessibility, some HVAC improvements, electrical lighting, signage, and some facade and landscaping treatments as well. So all in all, it's a very fulsome application. And as was previous, as noted in the report, the commercial tenants, there is no plan for them to change, at least uh, certainly not in the near future. 
this is really, um, you know, meant to upgrade the property and any aesthetic or commercial improvements will be made so that they uh, will benefit the existing ten tenants and really be a, a good fit with uh, what's there right now. So they've requested uh, support in the amount of $24,000 in grants, which will cover facade, signage, interior commercial grant, accessibility, and the permit fee. And they've also requested support through the loan program, uh, which would be $20,000 per property for a total of $40,000. So just as a reminder, we're um, doubling up, so to speak, on this application because it does address um, two individual storefronts. And that essentially covers the bulk of my report. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you very much, Dana. Uh, yes, it was, a, I could tell that they put forth effort for sure. Um, to the committee members, do you have any questions or concerns or comments to, for Dana? Thank you, Jim, go ahead. Uh, Chair, I, I don't really have a question. I just happened to be, I looked through the application before the meeting and I didn't see that under other consultant in engineering is another consultant. I do work two days a week for in engineering in a planning capacity, but you know, I know nothing of the application, uh, but I thought I better make you aware of that. Dana. Thank you. Um, Jim, I do appreciate that. I, as a staff person, I don't foresee any, concerns or uh, potential conflict of interest. If you would agree, Chair Jansman, Matthew. Uh, and I just see if I could uh, allow um, Matthew to speak, if you would. So um, given that uh, you have identified that there's a potential, then um, I would just ask that perhaps you um, not participate in the conversation and uh, avoid um, voting on it, but uh, I tend to agree with Dana. Uh, it uh, you don't uh, personally benefit from uh, from this particular application or or that sort of thing, especially being kind of working for a third party uh, for the firm. Um, but uh, just to be on the safe side, then uh, if we can take that uh, um, approach to it, then, then that just makes sure everyone's covered. Apologize, I didn't see that ahead of time. Matthew, Dana, L Lindsay, perhaps. Um... With that being said, did I hear you correctly, Matthew, for Jim not to vote? That's correct. So would that be an issue then? Because I just, just I have my phone right here and I just see that I received a text from Mayor Todd that he is going to be logging on in five minutes. So through you, through you, Chair, um, perhaps if we hold off or, def I mean, I know we've already discussed it, but if um, committee member Hutton doesn't vote, he then, it, um, the motion fails because by by not voting, it's it's against it and we don't have quorum. So it it would not pass through. So if we can hold off till the mayor comes, sure. I don't know if we uh, just hold off until if we def Typically, if we defer, it's to a set time, so we could defer for another 15 minutes and we can continue the discussion then, if, if that's sure. how the committee wishes to proceed. Yes, and maybe in the meantime, Councillor Burton has uh, questions or concerns, and I have a couple questions, so yes, and then if need be, Lindsay, if you're, as per your suggestion, we would just discuss the 08 program for, and, and then go back and, and um, vote on the zero seven, if that's okay. Perfect. Uh, Councilor Burton, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, no, forget that. Councilor Burton, do you have any questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. No, I uh, just, just a couple comments. I do like um, that they're doing some, um, some gardening around it, some trees and some flowers. And I think that's gonna really add to the property. Um, the lighting is a big um, a big thing for me as well. It's going to definitely draw some people's attention to uh, to the building. And um, other than that, I, this building's been around for some time now, and it's nice to see that uh, they're getting a, a little bit of a facelift. So, thank you. Thank you. Actually, along those lines, I was um, I was liking very much the night view. Um, that was supplied in the report. And that's just going to enhance the whole 
location, right? And and it is such a main street um, landmark, you know? And of, of course, accessibility is, is the only way to go these days. So uh, that was well appreciated as well. Um, it, it seemed to, I was almost surprised because it re requires so much structural uh, work that the building was sold, but uh, that certainly has nothing to do with that. Um, and I just replied back to uh, Mayor Todd saying, great, do so. And then he said, one sec. So with that being um, the case, maybe we can even just hold off moving forward and uh, just giving him some background. I'm sure he's, he has prepared himself too. And then he might as well have some comments or questions for, for our staff in regards to this. So if we could, do you have any uh, way of telling if he's in the waiting room or anything, Matthew, by chance? Uh, yes, I can, as soon as he enters the waiting room, I'm able to, uh, to see that. I will jump in here um, just to note or provide, um, I guess, some reassurance um, to the committee that the involvement of in engineering is strictly from a, a consulting standpoint. The They don't have any vested interest in the property um, whatsoever. It was simply the consultant that was used by the property owner um, to prepare some of the design work. And if it hadn't been uh, this consultant, um, there would it would have been one of a number of other consultants utilized. So the project certainly would have been moving forward regardless of the consultant used. And Thank I you. think there's Mayor Todd just coming in right now. Thank you for that, um, Dana. That that's um, perhaps could be well noted as well in the minutes. Thank you, Lindsay. Mayor Todd, can you hear us? Yes, yeah, sorry, just for some reason, Zoom is taking a long time to connect for me here at home now. Not sure what the issue is. Are you with Rogers, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> anyway, the, um, just, just to give you a little bit of background of the first few minutes of this meeting, we are still on uh, agenda item 5.1 in regards to the CIP application for 270 Edward Street, which of course you know better as perhaps Dr. Holmes and McDougall Insurance. And uh, with myself and Kelso Burton and Jim Hutton, um, it, it was just better um, uh, that Jim Hutton did not vote on this particular file. So with that, we're very happy that you came. <laughs> and, uh, and not perhaps a fair question, but Dana did uh, supply the highlights to this report, but I'm sure that you read them over um, in preparation of this meeting. And with that, if you have any questions or, or concerns, um, uh, Dana, no doubt will have an answer for you. <laughs> Sure. I apologies. I'm just trying to load the agenda again here, and it's spinning and spinning and spinning. <laughs> just one moment. I don't know why this isn't opening. And so there it is. This the uh, recommendation just for your. Uh... Uh, review is that the Planning Advisory Committee approve in full the CIP application in the combined maximum amount of 24,000 under the grant category and 40,000 under the loan category. So with that, it, it, it is a combined, um, um, you know, electrical, structural, cosmetic, yeah, a full report. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. The only question I, I would have of, uh, of Dana, and maybe she's already covered this, so I apologize for asking it again. Just on lighting, I mean, that, that seems to be kind of my go-to on these things. Uh, is there anything there in terms of a lighting plan? I see it noted in the, uh, in the report that that's part of the plans uh, going forward, but Dana, could you just a little background there on what to expect from the, the new facade? Certainly, Mayor Todd, thank you. Um, so there's uh, definitely some new lighting planned for the, um, the building and the signage area. It is going to be gooseneck lighting, so it's definitely in line with the current sign bylaw. 
and I think would be it would be very similar to the lighting that we're seeing at h and Block, uh, the same type of lighting that was installed at the Visitor Center and Museum. I think it will be a great complement to the building and um, the um, new facade treatments that they're going to be installing as well. I do see the gooseneck lighting now on the uh, on the review and even yeah, yeah sorry there's even a nighttime so I looked at this really quickly last week and I didn't catch there were, there was this much uh, additional information thanks so much Dana this 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 looks really uh, this looks really good and unless there was anything else I mean I'm 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 prepared to vote in favor of it was there anything else that was raised of any potential concern to the other committee members. Uh, no, actually, uh, not at all. Just that we made mention of the, the night view and that uh, grateful that uh, the new buyer wants to put so much investment into the building. And, and of, of course, that includes accessibility as well, which is always, always the way to go these days. So. so I think we just uh, might have... It looks really nice. Um, so I think we might have one uh, logistical uh, item if we could cover. I believe the seconder uh, could not be uh, Jim Hutton, and I believe he originally uh, did second the, the motion. Oh, so right. if Mayor Todd would uh, be comfortable with seconding the motion, then that'd be fantastic. And then if you're comfortable with taking a vote, then more than happy to, uh, to entertain that. Thank you. Uh, certainly, I'm assuming Councillor Burton did make that motion then uh, originally, and it is uh, on the recommendation, the exact wording, is that... Uh, Correct. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, 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 to second that. This looks like a, another excellent downtown uh, rejuvenation project. Okay, with thank you, Maritime. And with that, all in favor? Perfect, carried. Awesome. You can come back now, Jim. <laughs> Moving on to uh, PAC Report 08 2022 that the planning. Planning Advisory Committee recommend that Council approve the proposed site plan application SPC 2021-04 subject to the following conditions. The balance of any outstanding taxes, including penalties and interest, uh, shall be paid to the town. And the second condition that the site plan agreement of the lands shall be registered and submitted to the town. For discussion purposes, if I could have somebody move that uh, recommendation, please. Thank you, Leanne. Second by. Thank you, Jim. Okay, with that, I I see um, this is uh, Matthew report. If you can go ahead, um, Matthew, if you would. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. So this evening, what you have in front of you is the site plan agreement file for uh, the 965 Elbert Street North, which currently is a McEwen gas station. Uh, it currently has two pumps in front of the building, uh, has a small convenience store, and then there's a card lock uh, in behind the building. If you remember uh, back several months ago, uh, planning advisory did approve a, a separate site plan control agreement to move that card lock to uh, Churchill. Uh, road and so uh, they're just getting away uh, on their construction now and this is the redevelopment of the site. Uh, we expect it to begin uh, in uh, August I believe they're looking at and then having it uh, finished this fall. So the proponent uh, Grant Castle uh, Corporation which is to redevelop the site to, to include a 320 uh, square meter convenience store uh, with parking in front of the building uh, plus 123 square meter touchless car wash, which would be behind the building. And uh, there would be three gas pumps or three gas islands under a new canopy um, in front of the building, as well as electric uh, vehicle charging station uh, would be included as well. So the site plan uh, application was submitted in October of 2021. Uh, the details were uh, sent to WSP planning for uh, their comments, as well as EVB engineering. Uh, it was also sent to all uh, applicable uh, third parties and town staff and uh, to date no comments have been received from uh, third parties including MTO um, which I believe uh, they were uh, fine with uh, this particular development and uh, town staff didn't have any uh, concerns from a development standpoint. Uh, it did take uh, a little bit of time to go through the various uh, iterations from a planning and uh, uh, engineering perspective. And so that's why uh, it's coming forward to you now. 
So from a site plan uh, perspective, uh, WSP noted that uh, the proposed use uh, fits well within the uh, general commercial designation under the official plan. Uh, the building uh, with the um, car wash would be a total of 443 uh, square meters, um, being a, a, a what they call floor area ratio of approximately uh, 1.28. Um, which um, again uh, fits within that that total uh, that they're looking for from official plan perspective. Uh, then we went through all of the provisions for uh, the zoning bylaw, and uh, we're happy to say that uh, each of those um, were met. Uh, minimum lot frontage uh, is slightly smaller than uh, the required. However, if it's an existing lot. Um, by when the zoning bylaw was passed and all of the other uh, portions of the zoning bylaw uh, requirements are met, then it can continue uh, being uh, undersized in terms of a lot frontage. Um, so uh, we went through, uh, obviously there's uh, several pages of uh, information. There are going to be 17 parking spaces uh, because of the size of the retail store. Uh, it alone requires uh, 10 parking spaces. Then there's five parking spaces for um, the waiting area for the um, touchless car wash, as well as uh, the barrier free. Um, so uh, all of that is uh, provided for, um, as well as bicycle parking uh, is a requirement that there be 16 spaces. Uh, they were able to, to achieve that. That's certainly one of the areas that uh, going forward, when we take a look at convenience stores, um, as well as uh, just general retail stores, we seem to be a little bit high on bicycle parking. I think uh, the uh, Dollarama that, uh, that we recently touched on uh, was in excess of 30 uh, bicycle uh, parking spaces, which I would be uh, very happy if we had that many people uh, driving bicycles, uh, but that does seem to be a little high for considering the size of the store. So just as we move forward uh, out of the official plan and towards zoning bylaw, it's things like that that we're noting that um, might be um, overly uh, generous and, and those sorts of things. So uh, WSP's uh, final conclusion was based on the information that was provided, um, the uh, gas bar, including three pumps uh, and the convenience store, the touchless car wash, uh, meets the and complies with the permitted use under the zoning, as well as uh, it met all of the requirements under the zoning bylaw. Uh, further, we had all of the engineering uh, reports that were submitted uh, sent to WSP for review. So that includes the erosion and sediment control plan, the demolition plan, uh, site development plan, grading and drainage, uh, general servicing plan, reclaim uh, tank servicing plan, stormwater management, uh, the pre-development watershed plan, the post-development watershed plan, construction detail, stormwater management report, and the servicing briefing, uh, as well as uh, because this is a gas station, it's governed under TSSA, and uh, they already have uh, provided their approval. A traffic control plan, uh, because they're going to have to uh, make connections into Irvine, uh, they have uh, provided for a detour um, that will take approximately a week or two to uh, be able to have traffic uh, move around if they need to um, get to industrials. So uh, they'll go down to Churchill and, uh, and then access uh, industrial that way. Uh, they have reached out to both um, what was previously uh, Beach Home Hardware as well as Burger King to make sure that uh, they were comfortable with that uh, particular plan. Um, from there, uh, so we went through, uh, achieved all of the uh, review under the um, engineering. And so uh, the staff uh, have reviewed and uh, submitted the documentation to the committee this evening uh, with the recommendation that it uh, be approved and move forward for council's consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for all that. That's, uh, that was a, another big report. So appreciate all of that information. Um, with that being the case, uh, committee members, is there any questions for Matthew? Mayor Todd? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, just uh, through you to, uh, to Matthew, if I may, uh, the one question I would have on this, and I'm not sure it can be readily answered or if it was looked at, but I do see in the plan uh, there, there is the, uh, the allocation for the electric charger, but it looks like it's just a single station. 
So I believe it's uh, one pedestal with two um, uh, chargers on it. Uh, similar to how that, that we've installed them is, uh, is I believe what they're moving forward with. Okay, and, and that's, that's a, even if it is two chargers, I just, I, I wonder what other municipalities are looking at for something like this now as we are looking at that transition phase into EVs what are we at 2030 or 2035 uh, now for that, for that moving forward. So I, I do wonder, and it, it, it's, it's not, it wouldn't be a terrible thing for them to add those. There, there looks like there's space there for some expansion, but my only concern would be if uh, it, it, maybe it's too much of an afterthought right now with just a single charging station uh, that, that can accommodate the two vehicles. That would be my only disappointment with this. Otherwise, I mean, it, it's fantastic redevelopment, fantastic addition to uh, to the site overall. But I, I do wonder about the electric aspect of this. It does seem a little uh, a little uh, a little skimpy based on where we are where we are heading. So I don't know if they have plans to move forward or if that is something that we could actually request as part of a site plan uh, you know review process that rather than you know add this at a, at a later date in five or six years that there should be at least some planning accommodation for it to show where the added uh, chargers could be when we do get to the point that we're moving forward i can't imagine they wouldn't have thought of that uh with with a with a, a renovation like this to put this much money into it when we are looking at going electric uh mandatory essentially electric vehicles uh within a decade or uh or 15 years so anyways, just, just a comment. I don't know if that came up in the reviews with EVB or anything, but that, that was the only thing that I had. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Come up at this point, simply because uh, it's not under the building code uh, that it hasn't been added or uh, to, to either our zoning or official plan. Um, so what they are able to do though, is as moving forward, they have a number of spaces along the building that we'll be able to provide for, for that uh, in a much easier fashion. Um, one of the reasons why they kind of moved it out um, is that they have put in the infrastructure uh, away from the building so they could add it uh, further back. But then it just makes perfect sense for them to, as they go forward uh, that they have 10 spaces in front of the building and then another five on the side. So uh, more than enough space to, to start adding uh, chargers at that point. So it, uh, I don't see it as being a concern, but certainly is something that we can uh, address with them to, to just make sure that the infrastructure is there as they go forward. Uh, just one real quick follow up, uh, Madam Chair. Is it possible we could just ask a couple questions along those lines so we can raise this at the council meeting just to, to show our commitment to going green as well? Because this is going to be a question that will be raised by people in the public. I can I can almost guarantee it. Uh, so it'd be good to be able to cover that off when we bring this to council. Otherwise, no, what looks good. Thanks very much, uh, Matthew, for uh, those comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mary Todd. Uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, uh, Jim, hi. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I see the only change from access to Edward Street is it's one one access point in and out. I think now we kind of have two access points with a little island in the middle. So I, I'm, I'm assuming everything's, uh, Matthew said, everything's been through all the various authorities. And the other question, the question I have is the tanks. This says the unleaded and I guess two tanks for unleaded. Are they in the same location they are now or is that a new location? I think it's slightly changed uh, from where they are now. And so uh, one of the things that they'll have to do as they go through the process is remove the current tanks, uh, put in the new tanks, and they have to do their environmental testing when they're removing. So it, uh, it's all governed under TSSA and, uh, and certainly we... Uh, always look for those approval letters and uh, making sure that uh, they've addressed all of those items for TSSA. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you. And if I could follow up on, on that, um, I, uh, resident contacted me and asked if I would inquire about um, if our, if our w, planners, our WSP um, consultants had any concerns because the crosswalk seems to be and already concern at that uh, is so nearby there. If it would be beneficial at all to have the entrance that Jim just made reference to, would it help at all to have just one, it being only an entrance and then perhaps the one on Irving to be the exit? Just, just something, if that was brought up at all. 
So we definitely look at it. And so one of the things that they did is they moved the entrance away from the corner as much as they possibly could, okay. um, which is something that we were absolutely looking for. The other uh, thing that Dana and I went uh, quite a bit back and forth on is exactly where they're putting their sign and making sure that it was back out of the way of the uh, crosswalk. And so those were definitely two of the things that we wanted to see, kind of move the traffic up and out of uh, that area. Um, we still think it is uh, reasonable to have an in and an out uh, there. Uh, most people are going to, if they want to continue on, will uh, head south uh, for leaving that particular parking lot versus, uh, or if they're going to turn north, they were, are likely going to go to Irvine um, to be able to, to do that in that uh, overall. Right. And so uh, from a traffic perspective, we were comfortable. It met all of the engineering uh, requirements from a traffic perspective. Uh, but we, from a staff perspective, we were very cognizant of wanting to move that laneway away from the corner, as well as making sure that any signage being added wasn't going to complicate the already difficult situation. So uh, we actually had them kind of mock it up for us and uh, it will actually be to the, uh, from a, a sightline perspective to the west of the Burger King sign. So you'll see the Burger King sign uh, closer to the road than you will the uh, McEwen sign. So, so those were just a couple of things that we wanted to make sure uh, we addressed as we went through it. Wonderful, because I suspect that will be uh, a concern at, around the council table as well. Thank you, Matthew. Councilor Burton, any uh, questions or comments for, for Matthew? Thank you, Madam Chair. No, um, I was going to ask about the the entrance, um, but that was already covered. So thank you. Great. Thank you. I think it, it's worth noting, too, that I was uh, not surprised at all, but very uh, grateful to the Burger King and beaches being very accommodating during the construction period. So um, kudos to them. Any other uh, questions or concerns before we vote? No? With that then, all in favor? Perfect, thank you, Carrie. And moving on to, because uh, the agenda included the CI, uh, CIP um, activity, um, the financial record has been updated for your, that was part of the package. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's looking great and we still have an amount uh, remaining for the balance of the year, that's quite healthy. Do you want to speak any more, any more to that, Matthew? Um, no, so just a, a couple minor changes. We've uh, finished a couple of uh, CIP, closed them out, and, uh, and continuing to see the older ones uh, start to move off and uh, be closed or completed. And then uh, the, the more recent ones are uh, continuing to move forward. So uh, still very happy with, with the success of the program and uh, the, uh, look forward to uh, seeing some of those other projects uh, more recently that have been undertaken uh, start to, uh, to move forward as well. Thank you. Perfect. And uh, Matthew, if I could ask, uh, and I think I'm confident I know the answer, but just for anybody out there who might be listening, we, we have been, we have had no issues with our loan category of, of receiving the regular payments, um, that kind of thing. Nope. Uh, so uh, to date, we're continuing to receive payments. Uh, basically, it starts a year after they've finished uh, their project. And so um, we, as I mentioned, uh, no problems with collection. And, uh, and if they sell the building, then the, uh, the uh, loan becomes repayable immediately. Perfect. Good. Thank you. Any other questions for Matthew? Maritime? Not really a question so much as a statement, just because I happen to make the mistake of going on Facebook on the weekend. Uh, I would love to take this and actually just plaster it all over the town because you see the amount of money we are spending in the downtown, the amount of effort from private investors as well. We just obviously approved another one, right? It's not on King Street, but it's right around the corner. Uh, today, we are getting tremendous investment in the downtown core, and we are certainly doing everything we can to spark that. It's been a tremendously successful effort the last couple of years, even with COVID. So I just I just love seeing this, uh, how much we have put out and how much private investment has been brought into the downtown as well. So 
just uh, just enjoy seeing this. And I want to thank staff for all the hard work on on all of these projects that have been brought forward. And uh, I know there will be more to come before the end of the year as well. So hats off to staff on this and hats off to everybody that's uh, invested in our downtown because we, we are seeing a success story there. It may be a little slower than we all would like, but it, hey, that's brick and mortar retail today. That's downtown Canada today. It's a challenge, but we're meeting the challenge. So nice to see. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Um, perhaps is it is it uh, to your point, Mayor Todd? Would it be um, possible to get some kind of a media release on RCIP, Matthew? Yes, uh, absolutely. I, th I think that would be a, a great opportunity to uh, to just uh, mention how far we've come, as well as uh, uh, what we're doing uh, this year as well. And uh, I think. Uh, already, uh, we've approved over eighty thousand for this year again. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'd be happy to do that Perfect. and uh, get that out before the next meeting. Perfect. Good if, stuff. Yeah, if we could couple that with something at the council meeting, just as a quick, I'm not even going to say report, even a verbal, just so that we can get it out that way and let all of council hear this as well. So, and then get it out because I think it's a great idea. I, I mean, we can't we can't promote this enough because it does combat some of the negativity you do see on social media. And, and unfortunately, investors and communities do look at social social media to sort of gauge the temperature of uh, what's happening in towns and, and uh, municipalities that might want to invest in. So anything we can do to combat that, I think is, uh, is, is a step well taken. Perfect, good stuff. Okay, moving on to our Number six item, new business. Anyone have any new business for this committee? Not seeing any. So we're on to number seven, which is adjournment. And before uh, we get, if we address that, I just want to thank everybody for their participation. It's so late in the day as always, but it's very much appreciated. So if I could have somebody move adjournment, please. Mayor Todd, seconded by. Jim, thank you. All in favor? Have a great rest of the evening to everyone. Thank you very much.